Hi all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favourite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. If you've been scuba diving for any length of time, then chances are that you probably have heard of DAN, or the Divers Alert Network, who are the first recommendations on most of the diving forums. If any diver posts a question about medical safety, you'll normally all of the responses start with, you should probably call DAN first. I myself have used them for years, and even though they have successfully aided divers to attain the most appropriate medical treatment possible for a good 40-something years, on this particular occasion, it seems that things could have been done much better, and there are a few things that really tied up getting the diver the treatment that they required. After the event, Dan have looked over everything that has happened, and they released this initial response on what could have been done better and how they're going to change going forwards and I'm going to break down and explain each part. So far Dan has identified two main areas of improvement and several changes to actually get there. Today's video is sponsored by online gear retailer scuba.com. You can find a huge range of diving equipment on their website from all of the top diving brands and their latest shiny diving equipment. So you can click on the link up here or down in the description below to check them out. But first let's go over Dan's response and see how they plan to improve themselves and what you can do to help prevent this from happening to you. Just before Christmas, a Dan member who was diving in Abaco, Bahamas, experienced an incident that resulted in decompression illness. When he contacted Dan and tried to access the benefits of his Dan membership and insurance, he did not receive the level of service he should have. Although we are still collecting information about Dan's response to this incident, we can offer the following additional context to what was previously reported. So, the initial section is all pretty self-explanatory. A diver with Dan membership came back from a dive and experienced decompression illness. But when they seeked medical treatment, they didn't get the right medical care as quickly or as easily as they or Dan would have liked. The DCI diagnosis. This is the first improvement point that Dan highlighted. During the initial call, the member's dive buddy reported a provocative exposure followed by signs and symptoms compatible with decompression illness, or DCI. So after the dive, the buddy contacted Dan and reported that their buddy was showing signs and feeling symptoms of decompression illness. As experienced divers, they recognized the signs and the symptoms of DCI, and they contacted Dan and got them to medical treatment. At the time, the member was under the care of a physician who was completing his initial examination, but had not yet rendered a diagnosis. After the initial call, the medic discussed the case with their supervisor. Following that discussion, seven minutes later, the Dan medic called the member back to confirm a higher level of suspicion for DCI. This is standard operating procedure. So the diver was already being looked at by a local physician when the buddy was calling Dan. After the initial phone call, the Dan medic, who was on the phone, discussed the case with their supervisor, who then decided that there was a high chance of decompression illness, and then they called back to let the divers know that. Understand that this was not a medical diagnosis by Dan. The responsibility to diagnose rests with the evaluating physician or other on-site medical personnel. Dan is there to support, not replace, the treating physician. It is the treating physician who makes all medical decisions based on their examination of the patient, something Dan cannot do remotely. So this is a important part. As skilled and experienced as all of the Dan team are, they're still only talking over the phone as advisors at this point. The official diagnosis is what the doctor right in front of the patient, who may not be fully aware of decompression and everything that comes involved with that, they have to make that diagnosis. Dan can only help them out with their specific expertise. They can't take over on the phone, they can only advise. In this instance, the treating physician who lacked training in diving medicine was offered peer-to-peer -peer consultation with Dan's medical director. However, this offer was never accepted. So Dan offered for their medical director 
to talk with that treating physician, but for whatever reason, that was declined. The immediate action for this, for Dan, is to reinforce to all Dan medics that Dan's medical director is available for consultation with the treating physician. If the treating physician lacks the skills or education needed to diagnose a diving injury, the Dan medic will strongly recommend an immediate consultation with Dan's medical director to determine what's best for the injured diver. The first paramedic and the doctor that a sick diver will be treated by will have plenty of medical knowledge um, between them, but recognizing decompression illness is still quite obscure for most. They'll know how to fix broken or know how to diagnose broken bones and certain types of illnesses and whatnot, but scuba diving is is a little bit obscure. So if they haven't really looked into it, then that's not what they're gonna diagnose. But Dan wants to reiterate that they have experts in this very specialized area who are keen to consult with local physicians to help them diagnose and treat patients properly. The second area of concern for Dan was the medical evacuation and payment of cost. Once it became apparent that evacuation to a higher level of care was required, the effort began to complete a medical evacuation from Abaco, the site of the incident, to Nassau, the location of the hyperbaric chamber. To coordinate medical transfers, such as this one, Dan has a contract with the world's top-rated travel assistance company. Per existing Dan Standard Operating Procedures, or SOPs, this case was transferred by the Dan medic to Dan's travel assistance provider so they could arrange the evacuation. It was decided that appropriate treatments couldn't be given where they were and the diver needed to be transferred to a hyperbaric chamber. Dan assists with this all of the time and they have partners and dedicated teams who arrange these transfers. The information we've collected reveals several possible departures from Dan's standard operating procedures. It seems that, among other things, Dan's travel assistance provider failed to provide the benefits and services owed to the member under his Dan membership and insurance. Despite being told that the situation required an immediate medivac, the travel assistance company failed to timely find an approved carrier that could conduct a nighttime evacuation. Evacuation. Others involved in the incident, who on site, helped the member arrange his own evacuation from a local air ambulance company. So whilst Dan is supposed to be able to organise transportation, at that time of night they couldn't. But luckily for the diver, those around him managed to organise transport from a local air ambulance to get where he needed to go. It's not great, but it's hard for an organization to have contacts on every single possibility for transport in every single corner of the world. They're not going to know absolutely everybody. The member was required to complete a Dan claim form prior to getting needed assistance. This is a requirement imposed by the insurance carrier, but one which Dan will no longer enforce whilst an emergency exists. Once the emergency passes, there will be plenty of time to complete any necessary paperwork. <coughs> yeah. Even Dan admit that this is a little bit daft, forcing the diver to fill out forms before treatment in an emergency everything stops until you fill out the right paperwork that doesn't really make much sense i'm sure this does help to reduce wrong information and uh, and treatment but in an emergency time is often of the essence and paperwork can be done later the member was required to complete a fitness to fly form this is not a dan requirement but is needed by most air ambulance companies before they can initiate a medical transfer this form is one page and must be completed by the treating physician. This is standard operating procedure when a medical evacuation is required. More paperwork, but nothing that Dan can prevent or postpone in this one. This paperwork is required by that local air ambulance and they won't leave the ground until it's completed. Dan can't really do anything about that, but they still note it. 
the member was required to pay for both the medevac and the hospital visit, despite Dan having standard operating procedures in place to make these payments when requested. The transcripts will show who advised the member that Dan would not pay, but the fact is Dan was not able to facilitate these payments. This was a deviation from Dan's standard operating procedures. Dan is there to pay for the member. We are investigating with our travel assurance provider to determine why this didn't happen. Although the member had to self-pay in this situation, he was fully reimbursed by Dan less than a week later. So the diver had to pay for both his hospital treatment and the flight to the hyperbaric chamber. While they did get their costs reimbursed by Dan and Dan should have paid for it all up front, Something in the chain of events and the chain of communication broke down and the diver had to open up their wallet, which could have resulted in other costs or complications. Because of this, Dan has changed its standard operating procedures in several ways. Dan will remain the primary point of contact for case management. The Dan medic assigned to the case will participate in all calls between Dan's travel assistant provider and the member to reinforce the urgency of taking action and to make sure the member gets all of the benefits and services that they are entitled to under their Dan membership and insurance. In emergency situations where a medevac delay may affect the medical outcome, the search for available search providers, air ambulance providers, is being expanded to include local resources not previously known to Dan or the assistance services team. All Dan medics will have been advised to always ask if anyone involved in the incident knows of local medevac options. These will be then considered if medevac is necessary. In emergency situations, the requirements that Dan claim form be completed will be deferred until the emergency passes. In situations where payment is required prior to or at the time of service, the Dan medic will engage other Dan staff as needed to approve charges, issue guarantees of payment and affect payments by credit card and or wire transfer. At Dan, our constant aim is to ensure that a Dan member never has to make direct out-of-pocket payments. So those are all immediate changes that Dan have already implemented. They decided that, you know what, this is the right way to do it, we're going to do it this way. But they also plan to implement the following, which will take a little bit more time. It's not something that they can do immediately. An update to Dan systems and database to allow collection of information on key airports and local provider options for air transportation, similar to what we have for hyperbaric chambers. Development of detailed emergency action plans for key dive destinations. This will be done in conjunction with developing the local medivac provider database to give us a more complete picture of what needs to happen in specific situations. For Dan to expand its in-house assistant services capabilities. A part of Dan's medical services operation, the new Dan Assistance Services Group will replace Dan's travel assistance provider. This expansion of services was approved at a recent meeting of Dan's board of directors. Whilst originally scheduled for rollout later this year, plans are being accelerated to allow Dan to assume responsibility for all member assistance services at the earliest possible date. More information will be provided about this expanded service as it becomes available. So Dan is working to expand its existing database of emergency transport to also include alternatives outside of their network so that if one that's on their list isn't available, then there'll be an alternative that should be available and they won't be wasting time needing to search around and see if there even is another alternative. They've already done that search, it's in their database and they go, yeah, we can also use this. That also includes emergency action plans that can be activated to quicken responses in more areas so they know that if something goes wrong in this remote area, they can activate this specific emergency action plan and it's already laid out and there's no searching or time wasting. They're also looking to replace their travel assistance provider who organized that transportation for a larger service group to organize that transportation in a more organized fashion. This was already in the works behind the scenes, but it's gonna be expedited as soon as possible after this event. But bottom line, 
The diver got the treatment that they needed, but there were several hindrances, which if they didn't have the divers around them or the money in their bank account, uh, it, it may have been further delayed. And that is what diving insurance should have streamlined and handled for them, whilst they just have to focus on getting better. And the important thing is that Dan haven't tried to like sweep this under the rug or pass the blame onto anyone else, even before they've assessed absolutely all of the call logs and the timeline and assessed exactly what did or didn't happen. They've already implemented immediate changes and written up several ways to improve in the future. What this means for you as a, as a diver is to first of all invest in some kind of diving insurance if you don't already have some. Uh, things can get really expensive and you want proper experts organising the best care for you. Uh, wherever you're diving, consider your own emergency action plan, including times of day. When I was remote diving, we would avoid diving at certain times of day because by the time that we got you out of the water and we got you to the airport, the airport closed at certain times a day. And should something happen, uh, we would just need to wait until it opened. And so we just know you're not diving between these hours. Hope for the best, but plan for the worst is a good motto with this. If there are any updates, of course, we'll try and uh, sort of put a link to a, uh, or release another video or put any links down in the, uh, the comments below um, as the um, uh, as the post said they're still assessing and going through chat logs and all that kind of stuff to uh, to see exactly what happened who said what and uh, and where things could be improved um, but what do you think how do you think Dan did in this case uh, or just diving over all uh, in the insurance uh, let us know down in the comments below the best way to prevent long-term negative effects of decompression illness, as always, is to avoid it altogether by diving as safely as possible. Um, that being said, accidents can and will happen. So you still need to plan for the worst and dive with the best and most appropriate diving equipment available. Uh, there's no use diving to great depths or overhead environments with some really basic diving equipment with no brand name on it. And of course, if you want the best, then remember to check out today's sponsor, scuba.com. Uh, they have one of the largest range of premium dive equipment out there, and they have multiple dive centers spanning the width of the United States. And if you fancy catching up with the latest scuba diving news, then you can consider a subscription to our digital or physical magazine on our website scubadivermag.com and subscribe to the channel here if you haven't already here on youtube thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving